And how about Madison, Wisconsin? What are some special challenges that you all deal with there? Um, <clears throat> well, you know, it's, it, the, yeah, like the flakes is always a problem, and um, there's, you know, there's not <clears throat> the wealth of talent necessarily, but we do have a lot of really talented friends, so it's actually not as much of a challenge as you think. And um, actually one huge thing is that we never would have made Chad Bader at all if we'd been in L.A. because you have to pay like $3,000 a night to rent a grocery store. Right. <laughs> Whereas in Madison, we walked in the grocery store and they were just like, oh yeah, totally, you guys can shoot here whenever you want. We'll help you, we have ideas, Chad, Chad should do this. <laughs> they were just like so excited and they, could, they just wanted us to, to, you know, to come in there and shoot like all the time, so. That was a huge advantage, actually. That's very true, because everybody in LA is like, what, you're shooting something? I want $10,000. Yeah, permits, <laughs> you know? money. Yeah, permits, everything, because it, it's like everybody in LA is shooting something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like when I've been in Idaho shooting stuff, it's like, everybody's like, yeah, oh, this is cool, let me help you, yeah. Can we pay why, you to come be here it? at our Tell store? Yeah. You're, you're a what? How do you make money? <laughs> <laughs> One of our first uh, series that we did was a, a show called McCourt's In Session. It was like a courtroom, like a Judge Judy type show, but. I was the judge. And we went to Monroe, Wisconsin, where they had this beautiful old 150-year-old courthouse, and we asked them if we could use it. And the guy said, sure, and he let us in, and we were setting up our stuff, and he was like, okay, well, just close the door on your way out. <laughs> and we were there for like four hours, and we shot our thing, and we closed the door, and we left, you know? And so, and so it was, a, but it was a great opportunity. It was a huge, it was such a great set to, you know, it, it, let the show such an authenticity that we never ever would have gotten if we were in LA. So. Yeah, a lot of places that are outside these big hubs, um, they don't have the fatigue that there is for entertainment. You know, in LA, it's hard to, eat, not even just from a money standpoint, but just from an energy and creative standpoint. Like you walk into a bar that you want to shoot in, you say, we want to shoot a movie here. A lot of other places in the world, Austin's one of them, they'll say, a movie, that sounds awesome. But you do it in LA, they're like, well, I want script approval and I want to read this and that. You know, they, there's a higher level of sophistication which can help you, but that can also hinder you as well. We did a thing in Austin, we have a convention uh, for Rooster Teeth uh, in Austin called RTX. It focuses more on gaming. And uh, did you guys go out to that this year? Anybody? All right, you have to say yes now because you went woohoo. Uh, <laughs> And so one of the things we do there is we do a big shoot. We say, you guys watch our shows. Why don't you be in one of our shows? So every year we do a big shoot with the attendees. Last year we shut down the main drag in Austin, which is Congress Avenue. Austin is the capital of Texas. So we're shutting down the main road that leads up to the capital. We shot for four hours. We had 1,800 extras. It was a post-apocalyptic thing. So we had like dead bodies littering eight blocks of downtown Austin. Uh, and that cost us in total uh, $2,500 to shoot it. And uh, I was talking with Freddie, I told him about that, Freddie Wong, and he said uh, it cost him $10,000 to shoot in front of a high school for two hours. Uh, and, uh, and I realized, uh, like, like Hank was saying, it's like, you know, not everybody can move, you know, or can, you know, hire people to move to Montana or can't get 1,800 extras to show up because they don't have a convention. But we didn't all start with this, you know, we eventually moved on, uh, built where we were, found people that were there, had to deal with, you know, people leaving for Los Angeles or New York, and then slowly built this out as well. Um, so what are some, I'd like to hear some, like, really, really, um, you know, good stories about, like, L.A., like, have you guys ever lost any specific opportunities? Hank was talking about the Matt Damon thing. Is there anything that's really held you back because you didn't live in L.A.? Do you, now, you moved here right away, right. Well, but well, were the things me, before that? Tell your story, because you've gone back and forth, though. Yeah, so in, in 2008, we basically lived in L.A. for four years. So we moved out, I think it was in 08. 2009 to start Maker Studios, and we lived there for about a year and a half. And then we got pregnant with our fourth kid, and it was expensive. Like, that's the big thing with LA. It's money, 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 money. Not only to rent, you know, milk is $5 a gallon if you want to, you know, get a permit like he was talking about with Freddie Wong. It's just expensive. So with our fourth kid, you know, we're YouTubers. We don't really have, like, insurance through our company, so, you know, we're paying our own insurance. So we thought, if you're gonna have a baby in the same hospital that Michael Jackson died, it's gonna cost you like 10 times more. So we're like, let's move back to Idaho, have the baby. So we moved back after a year and a half of living in LA, started Maker, we moved back to Idaho and had our baby. And in that like 10 months and 12 month period, I was commuting back to LA two or three times a month. And that was just exhausting. Like, it was like Pocatello to Salt Lake to LA, you know, wow. back and forth. And I would like knew the, the pilot on a first name basis. 
So that was just, uh, you know, but I racked up a ton of frequent flyer miles. Yeah. I'm like diamond medallion status at Delta. <laughs> and uh, so that was just, you know, I used to think hotels and airplanes were cool and exciting and now I hate them. But, um, you know, so then we decided, because it was just so hard and there was so many opportunities after Rock Tarp was born, we decided to move back to LA. So now we've been back in LA for another like year and a half now. So uh, it's, it's always a debate, like it's a huge debate, even with our viewers, you know. They say they like the Idaho vlogs more, which I think really is because they like us being with like my mom and dad and my sister. And there's more characters in the vlogs, I, I kind of picture it that way. And people, I feel like, you know, they, they're afraid of us like going to LA and like becoming, you know, that stigma type of like, oh, you're all LA now, and you're, you're Hollywood now. So, talking about the audience here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there's that debate where it's like, will our vlogs do better and get more views if we're in Idaho? Or is it, you know, it's like, what's the opportunity cost of not being in LA and having cool opportunities come up? Because, you know, the, I think the key is to always like stay engaged and in contact with your audience, but at the same time, fostering those big opportunities that kind of take you down more of a mainstream path. And, you know, making a video with Matt Damon is really cool. My grandma thinks I'm like 10 times cooler now because <laughs> I was in a video with Matt Damon. And so it's, I don't think we'll stay in LA, I think is the ultimate answer. I don't think we will, uh, you know, be in LA forever. I feel like I want to move back to venture that night because I want at least three acres with six great dames running around. <laughs> and you can't do that in Los great Angeles. Dame farm. Yeah, I want a great dame. Milking mom. That's, <laughs> great dames hate. I, you don't? <laughs> Why not? Ride them. <laughs> we need little monkeys and saddles <laughs> and GoPros, and that's gonna be a whole new channel. I would watch that show. <laughs> I would absolutely watch okay, that. Okay, time for one last quick question. How about right here in the front? Can you give me an idea about like building communities? But I recently, like, over the past year, found it really hard to find new content on YouTube. Now, how would you go about doing it? Um. Well, uh, the way I do it is way, uh, probably the way it won't work for you is I ask. Um, but then once, once I ask, I get, I get some suggestions um, and I find a person. And then it often happens that there's this person who's getting, you know, five, 10,000 views. And they have already built up this little community of other people who are at, some, at a similar level to doing exactly what Shay is suggesting. And they're all friends with each other, they collab and they, they, you know, sort of riff off each other's videos. And, and that sort of gets me deep into this new little world that I didn't know existed. It's hard to, it's hard to find that when you're not me. You can be like, tell me what your favorite YouTube channel under 5,000 subscribers is. Um, and then your Twitter feed fills up. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I'd say uh, you could ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I use Tumblr a lot. Yeah. Right. But it's that's still Yeah, I mean, to do. it's it, YouTube is sort of not a great place for uh, for sharing. We find everything on Twitter or BuzzFeed. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah, like, which like is super frustrating. YouTube is really good at keeping you going around in circles on YouTube, showing you content yeah. that's very similar to content that you're currently watching, and maybe like giving you some of your strings every once in a while. Uh, but and then slowly you go down the spiral until you're watching, you know. Like Tom selectomy surgeries or something, <laughs> like a snake eat a baby. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm in that place again. Oh, I'm, oh, I love that video. <laughs> then the top comment is, oh, I'm in that part of YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 89 thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I want to thank all of you for coming out and sharing your time with us. I want to thank our panelists for sharing their expertise. Really quick, one last quick question for all the panelists. Do you have to live in L.A. to have a career in online entertainment? No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no, you do not. Thank you for coming.